did we get here? <laughs> hey, it's Romania Black. I. It, this is the weirdest penultimate episode of anything I've ever watched. I. Mm -mm. And I think the thing about it is because I, the, I don't feel like we're going to wrap everything up this episode because we still have that movie to go. So I'm like. I don't feel like it's near the end. And I know that movie's probably going to be like, I hope, fingers crossed, like two hours long. Um, I feel like we've got so much left to go. And we have so much left to know about Arata, about Shindo and his father, and about the Sybil system. I feel like Bifrost, we've not even scratched the whole surface with that. There's still like the explanation of what it is and how it works, what's been going on, its conception. Um, Azusawa, I'm, I don't know if Azusawa's storyline is going to get wrapped up up this arc or not i don't know and i couldn't wait <laughs> as of right now part two is getting ready to um to be on to be on patreon or even part one is about to be on patreon i just i i couldn't wait i wanted to to see this <laughs> and i know we still have providence after this and and i keep telling myself if I miss something in the series that is addressed in the comments, because sometimes when it's a series that I'm really, really into, I like waiting for the comments because I want to see if, if maybe I missed something and then people in the comments can talk about it. But I've also already decided I'm having a live stream at the end of July. So I'm like, well, my thoughts are, I don't want to wait. I'm so hyped. I want to see what's going to happen. And if I do miss something, then there is a big chance that during the live stream, we can talk about it there. So that's kind of like, my only reason for going ahead and watching and that I just couldn't wait and that I need to I'm trying to record ahead for the summer because I have some summer vacation and plans things like that so being able to record ahead is, is really important to me so that's why I'm here and my dogs are at my feet Huckleberry's growling what else can we do so <laughs> but yeah so what do I expect out of this final episode the gang's all here Akane's off in her jail cell somewhere Kasai jumped off the cliff but she's got spares she's fine i i think one kasai is gonna make an appearance i think kasai is gonna come back and everybody's gonna be like the fuck and she's gonna be like fine and akane is gonna be like told you um i think that kasai is gonna make an appearance i think that we're maybe gonna find out what the deal with at sushi and akira were and how azusawa was involved i feel like shindo is gonna be like i'm not like my dad and make a decision that will prove that. Kay, I, there's a part of me that feels like Azusawa will live through this episode, but then there's another part of me being like, will Kay get rid of Azusawa? And then will this episode end with Kay getting promoted to congressman and then us going into Providence? And what does that mean? I don't know. I just, I don't know. I'm like, is Homura gonna try to help Kay become a congressman and take down Shiragane? Is Shiragane going to take out... I don't think Shiragane is going to take down Homura. I don't. Is Homura working with Sybil System? I don't know. I And then in the back of my mind, nestled in the back of my recesses, I remember through all the Sinners in the System films how Frederica and Kogami were like, hey, you want to take down Sybil System? Me too. And we've not even seen a shred of that. So... Maybe Providence isn't going to be the last psychopath thing ever. I know it just came out last year, but maybe there will be future psychopath things in the future. I don't know. I won't be able to fully speculate until I see this episode in Providence and know where we leave off at. But I love this series so much, and it's been so much fun. Um, these three episodes, I would say they, honestly, they don't rank as high for me because... They're not as, it's it's, been, it's pretty much rounding out the season, right? We're rounding out season three, essentially, is what it feels like. It feels like that these three episodes of First Inspector were a part of season three. Now, I my, my mods have kept me from reading spoilers because they want me to experience everything first. So I'll be curious once we get through Providence. And by the time you all comment on this, I probably will have watched Providence. So go ahead and comment down below for the live stream. I'm curious why they separated these three episodes from season three because they feel like the last act. This feels like the last act of season three, and this is episode 11 of, of season three is what this feels like. So, and we've had 11 episode series. I think season one was maybe that possibly, or at least the extended episodes. The extended season was, was 11 episodes. So anyway, <laughs> 
respect y'all, but I feel like I'm just I'm just waiting at this point to rip the band-aid off, so we need to we need to dive right in, but I there's a lot that can happen in one episode of Psychopaths, and so it's hard for me to gauge what all we're gonna get. So we just need to find out, but we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to dive into Psychopaths First Inspector, Episode 3. And we're going to do that here in 3, 2, 1. And let's uh, go. Oh, well, <laughs> I can't decide. I, I don't. We only have Providence left. This this felt like it could be the end of a season, which is very funny because they end the season. It's like, well, that's a wrap. And I'm like, wait a minute. We have unresolved plot things that we need to talk about <laughs> before we go any further. So I feel like this season, even though it rounded out, and even though Huckleberry is like, you should throw this, even though it rounded out, and even though we got a lot answered, the whole Bifrost thing is hilarious. We're going to talk about it. Um, there's still so much that is left unsaid, not only things that were not answered from before season three, like between Sinners in the System and season three, and I guess that's where I should put it, the, the past unresolved questions between Sinners in the System and season three go here, and the current uh, unanswered things of season three and the first inspector. So we have two sets of things that have not been answered yet. And so I don't know if Providence is going to go back in the past for part of the movie and address the things that we haven't had answered and then connect to the present. I don't know. That seems like, it seems like there's still a lot left to do and we only have potentially an hour and a half to two hours left to answer the questions. So I'm like, okay. Um, what are we doing about this show? So let's think before I start going through this episode, which this episode was great. I, I, it, it, psychopaths never fails to somehow be in the ballpark of reason where it makes sense, but yet it's somehow not what you expected. And I was like, oh, okay. And, and then parts of it was what I was expecting and I was really excited about it. So we need to talk about it. But so in the past, we don't know how Akane was institutionalized and that's my biggest thing that i'm like okay if this movie's going to do anything if it could go back and explain akane's inst institutionalization that would be great and then how Genoza and sugo how they joined foreign affairs we know how kogami got there because min frederica met up in centers in the system and then have a kunizuka being freed, which I guess they don't necessarily have to go into detail about Kunizuka getting freed because we kind of already have the gist of what happened. It would be nice for them to reference it, but it's not necessary. Um, but yeah, so she's freed. Okay. And, but um, how Gnoza and Sugo got into the foreign affairs, that would be interesting to know as well. Also, things from the past is possibly Akane's connection with Atsushi which led her to connect to Shindo because I think that there's a connection there. So those are the main things that I feel should be addressed in Providence that we have not had answered prior, right? I feel like those things are important. Currently, the big thing on my mind is K as Inspector 13. He's not telling Shindo about it, which I'm kind of like, why not tell Arata? At this point, Bifrost is gone. But he may not know that Bifrost is gone, and he's waiting to see what happens. Then that connects to the idea that Homura is now the chief. Because Kasai is now the main congress. So, I... <clears throat> What do we do about that? So what the big question with this is what becomes of the foxes? Are they just disband? Are they just like, is, are they no more? Is Congress no more? Is since Bifrost has been dismantled, what are we going to do about Homer? And what about K as inspector 13? Because why isn't he telling Arata unless he's afraid he doesn't realize the whole thing with Bifrost has gone down and they're going to talk about it later. That could all be answered in Providence, I guess. We also, we know what happened to Maiko. We got some more backstory with that. What we also don't know is Atsushi and Akira 
and the overall story. We've gotten bits and pieces of it. Like it seemed like Atsushi was shot in the head and he was killed. But then I'm like, did he get in, did he get taken into the civil system and integrated into it? That's what it sounded like was happening, but we didn't get confirmation of that. And we didn't find out what happened to Akira, which is Kay's brother. So there's still quite a bit. And then also, I guess the last thing on here that I'm like, I kind of want answered is sort of foreign affairs and their tie with the civil system. All right. And then we have this whole thing with the pathfinders and the peacemakers, because that's kind of foreign affairs deal. They're like, we're after this group, this organization, and they're targeting people across the world. We're after them. What's their tie to civil system? How's this all going to go, right? Because essentially what civil system just did was it was like, oh, you were the one thing that could bring us down. Yeah, we just bought you out. So now what? <laughs> like, ah! So, yeah. So this all basically, these this stuff right here are things that weren't answered in season three or the first inspector series now do they necessarily have to answer any of these things no if you left it ambiguous and it was just left up in the air and at sushi or arata and k were like one day we'll find the truth we'll tell each other about what each other did and we'll go from there leave it up in the air if you wanted to have you know whatever akane did remain in the shadows sure okay we don't have to go into detail with that, I guess. It, it's all things they don't have to expand on. This episode definitely felt like we don't have to expand on it, but we know you want us to expand on it. It's like, yes, I do. So it very much was the show being like, we don't have to tell you all the extra details, but I guess we'll give you something to find out. And I'm like, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know. The great thing about this series is that even though it each season has a definitive feel they very much still leave parts of it off to the imagination for us to kind of elaborate on like what's that going to be like because now kane is an enforcer we, we, we're coming full circle right we've come full circle and it's like hmm her and ganoza started out as inspectors and they're ending up as enforcers and the crazy thing is arata can never become an enforcer because he's criminally asymptomatic he can't. He's, yeah, he is, he's asymptomatic. He cannot become an enforcer ever. So it's like, mm. K can, and apparently Akane can. So we'll see how that goes. This episode is called Rainy Day and, and then the rain ends. I, God, the flashback that opens this was so freaking good. And so we start with Shindo and k in the flashback and seeing how they both grew up and became friends like seeing them become childhood friends getting maiko involved and the three of them building this network and these the dad's tether lines for shindo and he's like don't isolate yourself always have a friend and it's like oh and and that makes you wonder like what happened with at sushi to where he didn't have a friend to where he didn't have that tether line what do we do about that hmm but yeah, Shindo says he tried to mentally trace his dad and it never worked and he couldn't do it. And Kay's like, that's not a good idea, but we're going to do this together. And he's like, we're going to, he's like, we're going to find the truth of my brother's death and your father's death. And we're going to go from there. I love how it's sepia toned to show that's happening in the past. And of course, anytime we see Kay with blonde hair, it's like a past experience, right? He's like, we'll do this together. So then he's like, we'll find the truth. And Shindo's like, okay. So he says that he's going to become a detective and that way he can track things down. And then we see him looking into the car and there's the bullet hole and there's his father who's been shot in the head. Mm. Now, that's the crazy thing about it is his father was shot in the head. Oh, I just noticed that. I saw the bullet hole and I thought that maybe his dad was like shot in this chest and the bullet hole came down from there like a sniper but no it shot him in the head you can see that now that it's now that it's paused there well damn it so he so interestingly enough atsushi could not become part of the civil system as asymptomatic because he was shot in the head 
Was he planning on becoming part of the civil system? It seemed like he was. It seemed like he was. So I'm curious. We've got all these theories here. I'm curious if Atsushi was planning on becoming part of the civil system and if Akira or Akane, one of the two, nixed that. Now, if Akane was responsible for Atsushi's death because she didn't want him to become part of the civil system and it inadvertently caused his death, I could see why the civil system would lock her up. Because you messed with, you messed with the civil system getting a viable brain and a member of its society. So I'll be very curious to see if we touch base on that uh, in, in Providence or not, right? That shot, though, is so haunting of Shindo just looking down in, at his father in the car. Oh, uh, and the rain, like, coming off of him. Then we see uh, on the couch, Maiko and Kay, and I assume they were crying about Akira dying, about his brother dying, right? And then the plane touches down, and we see the two of the, the three of them meet up again, and that's after the explosion. She's chopped her hair off, and she has the walking stick because she can't see. Then we see Kay and Shindo in the same academy together. Shindo's getting beat up. And then Kay is the one that saves him. And it's like they're always there together. I love the diving metaphor. I love the dad diving. And that's where he gets the deep dive idea. And he's like, if you dive, you, need, you can't lose your tether or you'll drown. So you always need somebody on the other end to help get you back. Like... I love that. That's so good. And clearly this se this seemed to happen before the mom died that he and then he finds out that at Sush that Shindo Arata is uh, asymptomatic as well. I do wonder if he wasn't planning on teaching his son to be a mentalist like him until he found out that he was asymptomatic and then he went full speed ahead. That's not cemented in this episode they don't fully say yes that's what happened but it's kind of implied so i'm curious to know if providence is going to give us more with at sushi and go from there but i love this opening i love him talking to his son and telling him don't be isolated make sure you have a lifeline and then when we see Maiko, and I know y'all want to ship, some of you want to ship Kay and Arata, and that's fine. I multi-ship. I'm not going to judge you. But the twinkle in, in Kay's eyes when he sees her, like, it was love at first sight. Like, aw. So then we see, like, Shindo's uh, mom, Arata's mom, like, he has her hair. That's about what he has. But she was drawn actually, like, almost realistic. To the point where it was a little creepy. And then that's when they find out that he's asymptomatic. And so we see someone with him who is part of Congress. That was a congressman. And so he meets all the criteria. It's only a matter of time until Sybil finds him. You were the only one I could ask, congressman. So it sounded like, let's break this down. Because see where, um, I'm going to grab another marker here. So the, in the timeline, we have at Sushi. And he takes Arata and he confronts a congressman about keeping, uh, keeping Arata safe from the civil system. And that's how he gets involved with Bifrost and the Foxes. Which you have to appreciate. He didn't want, he didn't want Shindo to get taken by a civil system. And, you know, because of his brain, he didn't want him to get assimilated. So he asked the people at Bifrost to be like, can you save him? And that looks like Shirogane, right? So then he takes... Now, the thing that's crazy is that Atsushi had access to the civil system. That's the thing that's crazy, right? So he had... He was confronting with Bifrost. But at the same time that he was doing that... He also had access to the civil system, which I'm like, how did you have access to the civil system? Unless he revealed he was criminally asymptomatic and was going to like offer himself to civil system. Otherwise, why is he there? And, but then Shirogane and them, they said, stay close to him and they, they let him over there. So I'm like, so whoever this congressman was, he led him to civil system. So 
So that can't be Shiragane then. It has to be somebody else. But who is it? Obviously, the civil system wanted to get rid of Bifrost because it was a threat. And now the whole comment about being like, is this a bug challenging us or is this a threat? That all makes sense now because it's literally a debugging system. So Bifrost is basically a debugging protocol that was originally attached to the civil system, which is probably why the congressman was attached to it. But over time, these other uh, greedy individuals, these foxes, decided to use it to control other aspects of society. Kind of like an organized mafia, basically. It was basically like an organized mafia, but they used the technology of Round Robin, which had a similar setup to the um, dominators in how they destroyed people, so that all makes sense now. It's like Round Robin was a feature of the debugging system used by civil system, and these people tried to hijack it and use it like a mafia for their own underground web of web of control. And civil system's like, okay, you've gotten a little bit out of hand. Now I gotta take you back because I was it was all fun and games, but now you're a threat, so no, I don't want to deal with this. And so they took it down from within. But the fact that the congressman and Atsushi were tied with civil system and made it to this level. Because so far, uh, poor Kagari. <laughs> Shindo knows about the civil system. He's fine. Uh, talk about privilege. Mika made it down there. She knows about the civil system. She's fine. Her and Shindo know. Basically, the people that know about the civil system at this point are uh, Shindo, Akane, uh, Mika, and Azusawa. Right? Is that it? Ginoza does not know. Um, none of the other enforcers know. Kogami does not know. Um, nobody. Those four are the only individuals that know about the civil system. But so does... I'm going to put Homura with a question mark here. Because Homura is very interesting. I don't... I don't trust me on a Mamoru playing a clean-cut, handsome man. I've watched Death Note. I know how this song and dance goes. Uh-uh. <laughs> Did did Miyata Mamoru go from playing Light Yagami to a competent Mikami? <laughs> ah! So, I, I... Homura is a big mystery. We're going to talk about Homura in a little bit. but So, those four are the only ones that know. Technically. And Azusawa is left behind bars. And the, the, the irony of all ironies is nobody will believe Azusawa. They'll think he's crazy. So, that's the perfect setup. It's perfect. Nobody's going to believe him. But so this guy takes him through civil system and then he has Shindo here and he says, Arata, this is the civil system. And he has him, okay. So the phone conversation from the last episode makes more sense now. When Azusawa called him, he was on his way with Arata to the civil system and Azusawa didn't know. And that makes more sense now because this guy was with them. And they were basically saying, do you offer yourselves up to the civil system overlords? And it seems like Atsushi was like, yes. And someone killed him before that happened. And Atsushi, or Arata decided to say no. Is what that seems like. Now, whether that's true or not, we'll talk about Azusawa here in a little bit. But he's like, this is the truth of this world. And he's like, you're qualified to become one of them. Which is terrifying! He's like, you won't be able to live with me anymore and you'll cease to be human. So he's like, no, dad, I don't want to. And I was like, I don't blame a kid for saying no. And that's when he locks his memories up. He's like, I saw the civil system. And then with the fox, like the fox clears away and it's like his memories have all come back and he's allowed to have this moment. And he, he's like, I need you to live on as a Rada Shindo, not as part of the civil system. But it's like Atsushi's going to do this, right? So meanwhile, we have Azusawa who once... Azusawa basically became Aaron Burr from Hamilton. He wanted to be in the room where it happens. <laughs> the room where it happens. And oh my gosh. I Very similar to Togany in season two, 
I love a moment where someone falls off the deep end and becomes a Shakespearean villain. I love it. It's just so much fun to watch somebody like go through the motions and become this like twist. Like we saw like a mini version of it with Tori this season, but to see Azusawa like just crumble and the facade fade away and for him to seem so indifferent and then him be like, no, I just want to be part of, I want to be on top. I want to be a God. And it's like, you're the ones that want don't get <laughs> it's the, that's the thing it's the ones who didn't want it that get it it's like mikishima arada they didn't want to be asymptomatic but here they are and you did and that's why you don't get it it's like ah but i loved when k pulled shindo back he grabbed him pulled him back from the brink and he's like i'm not gonna i'll never let go of your lifeline the thing that's so frustrating is that they are such good friends and they love each other, but they're still keeping secrets. At least they acknowledge that they each have secrets that they're keeping from each other. And they're like, hey, I'll tell you one day, same. And I'm like, okay, at least y'all are on the same page. That made me feel a little bit better at the end knowing, okay, they both know they have secrets, but eventually they're gonna tell each other maybe as we go. Frederica's interesting. Frederica going along with the deal from Azusawa. Azusawa was desperate. He was kind of at the end of his rope and he's like, I need to get out. And she's like, I can get you that. He says, I'll give you all the info I have on the Peacebreaker remnants overseas. So he's like, that's as long as they exist, domestic terrorism will reoccur. That's the info that you want. All Sad's hard work will be for nothing. She's like, don't you want revenge on them? So yeah, she has her own priorities and Azusawa kind of taps into that. But I feel like Frederica is very much a type of person who she wants to have her cake and eat it too. So she's like, sure, we'll take your info and your deal. But behind the scenes, she's putting all of the gears in motion to where they can catch him. So can we talk about the fact that after this episode, it's mainly, so the enforcers that we have left, we have Timma, we have Erie, we have um, Kisaragi, and we also have a uh, Hinakawa. I feel like Hinakawa is the new Shion, cause Shion got out. She got out with she got out with Yayoi. Her and Kunizuka are gonna be together again. Show. I don't know why the show backtracks a little bit. I'm like. The show's like, no, oh, I have an apartment you can stay at. You don't have to get a house. I'm like, bitches, you all were having sex like two seasons ago. What is this whole, like, maybe we'll get an apartment and maybe we'll be roommates. I'm like, y'all, you girls were together together like a season ago. We didn't forget. <laughs> so I'm like, y'all being coy. Come on now. But yeah, Shion is gone, which is amazing. She and Kunizuka get to have a happy ending. I'm, I love that. Girl put in her work. She owns like, I put in my hours. I'm good. I'm taking my break. So Hinakawa is kind of like the new Shion. So we have those four that are enforcers, right? And then inspector wise. And I guess Akane is going to be, and Akane is going to get to be with Hinakawa. So then our inspectors are, we have Kay. We have uh, Shindo. <laughs> we have Mika. And then we also have uh, Homura, who is now the chief since uh, civil systems taken over being the head congressman. Imagine. I just, God, Mika not only has to work under a man, which is her worst nightmare. She's like a male authority figure. The patriarchy. She now has to not only deal with that, but the fact that one of the enforcers is Akane, who is a literally walking time bomb of chaos, of righteous chaos. And she's going to be like, why? But why? <laughs> Meanwhile, with foreign affairs, we have Ginoza. We have Sugo. We have Kogami and we have Frederica. Look, I'm not going to lie, y'all. I'm not going to lie. I, do, do you do you see any conflicts of interest? I don't see any conflicts of interest. Are any of these characters in the same department as them anymore? No, they're not. So how about this? I don't care which one she gets with. I don't care if it's Ganoza. I don't care if it's Kogami. The show seems to think it's going to be her and Kogami. That's fine with me. I... Show, I ain't asking for much. If this is the last damn movie, I want to see some action. <laughs> it's a sign-in. Give me that. 
There are no, there are no conflicts of interest. It is interdepartmental. We can make this work. If Mika and Frederica can do it, I. I'm not asking for much. <laughs> I told the Discord, I'm like, all I want is Ganoza with his hair down and a shower scene, um, like a character from Jujutsu Kaisen season two. That's all I want. I'm not asking for much. <laughs> I feel like this fan service is justified. So yes. So they're basically, I, I really like Shindo and how he's like, I'm going to take down Azusawa. Trust me, I've got this. And I feel like Kay from knowing Shindo all of these years is like, yep, he's serious. He's got this. We're good to go. And I'm glad that him and, him and Karina, like, him and Karina get, like, on better terms. When he sends that info over, though, through the AI, my heart plummeted. Because here's the thing. Uh, at this point, Homura has access to Macarena. And he's given it to Kasai. So the AI that could stop civil system is irrelevant anymore. And we said, we won, now survive. And I said, we won. I don't know. I'm, the civil system, I thought at this point, when he said, we won, I thought Homura was suggesting that he was part of the civil system, is what I was taking it for. But when there's that confrontation with Mika and them, they act like they've never met. But then Mika leaves. We're going to go back to that conversation. I was like, so you don't know each other. But what now? Okay, we're gonna go back to that conversation though. So anyway, I they go to Bifrost and they're talking about creating a vulnerability in civil system and saying that Komiya was the way to make this work. The key is Macarena to continue to exist after the governor's death. So Sybil's recognized that Karina is an entity, a distinct entity from Macarena. So Macarena is basically a non-existent citizen. It will become a new rainbow bridge to combat the ever-evolving civil system. And here's the thing. What the thing says there is mass control of Karina's program files. Mm -hmm. So now Homura has access to all of that. And Shirogane does not have it. Ugh. So we get that there's been some kind of beef between Kogami and the one, uh, one of the rat, the assassin. So I'm guessing maybe that was something in the past that hasn't been addressed. The assassin and Kogami. Kogami has beef with everybody overseas, though. So I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Also, obligatory knife fight in Psycho Pass. Several obligatory knife fights. They talk about, I wanted to know if Kogami, when he says his sons, if he was talking about the one guy from the Sinners in the System from the Psycho Pass movie from overseas, the one, like, the bounty hunters or whatever, if Kogami's referring to him as their dad or their mentor, that's what I thought it was referring to, and it was a callback to that. But finally, the old geezers get taken out. Him and Vixen finally get taken out, and I was like, it took you all long enough, right? So, I like that Shindo just calls Kogami up, and he's like, hey, I got this, don't worry about it, and Kogami's like, I'm still going to get involved because that's just how I am. I'm like, ah, oh, I loved when Frederica said, you know, get dirty for justice. You're good at that. And I was like, yes, Kogami is, he's kind of like a mad dog. He kind of plays by his own rules. It's for his sense of justice. I, Akane likes herself a bad boy. And I'm like, Kogami is quite the bad boy. <laughs> I'm like, yes, he is. <laughs> He is very much the bad boy. And I'm like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he'd do anything for you though, right? And he's like, I want to face Azusa 1-1. And, and Kogami 2 is also like, I know for a fact that I can't leave it all to one person. He's like, that's not how a team works. Which for Kogami to say, Kogami, Mr. Lone Wolf, for him to say that you need to depend on a team, uh, Frederica's got him trained. Frederica has got him trained. I'm like, mm-hmm. But, so, anyway, we have Azusawa, who, like, gets to meet one-on-one -on -one with Shindo. I, when the Vixen comes in and shoots directly at Macarena, I thought that was Karina for a second, and I was like, oh! And then, of course, it's Kay that takes the Vixen on. I love that. 
Now, there was something with the lipstick that happened where she like wiped the lipstick off her face. I guess that was to track where she was so that they would come in and they can't track her anymore. I guess that's why she took the lipstick off. But him shoving the lipstick in her mouth and then firing the uh, Dominator at her. Oh. But yeah. So I like the fact that they use the AI to manipulate the system and make Azusawa think for a hot second that she, um, the vixen was still alive. What's interesting is we never got to figure out like what the vixen was taking revenge on. We never got that. So I'm, I don't know if that will be addressed in Providence or not. Maybe who knows? <laughs> in any case, I let's go back to that. In any case, the vixen ends up getting killed. The one guy ends up leaving, which is fine. And then poor Timma, poor Timma has to fight. Like he has to fight that one robot all by himself. I wanted to see what Obata was doing when we cut back to her. When we cut back to Obata. She was messing, and Azusawa tells her to leave. And so she's like, "Well, it took you long enough." And so we see. It looked like it was like an auto mode. So I guess they were just trying to keep the the building from being hacked. Poor Shion. I like the Eerie and I like the Eerie and uh, Kisaragi were protecting her. And then they have this like flirty moment together, which is so cute. I'm, I'm rooting for Eerie and Kisaragi. Like I'm rooting for them. So at first I was a little confused why the person trying to get in just left. But it was because Azusawa called them back to have them all leave together and get into the get into the uh, police cars and escape, right? And so Kogami gets um, acknowledged what the plan is by Frederica. He, and then Kay holding Kogami off felt like such a fan service moment. Because <laughs> at this point, it's like the wires are being slightly crossed, but they were building this up all, all season. They were building up Kay and Kogami to come to blows at some point. The hilarious thing is that Shindo is like a Kane. So K fighting Kogami are like two, two partners fighting for their partner who are similar. And I'm like, what boys, why are you fighting? <laughs> What's hilarious about this is Kogami doesn't get beat up at all. K gets his ass kicked by Kogami. And I was like, you should know Kogami has plot armor, man. You're not, you're not getting past Kogami. Mm -mm. That was insane. I kept waiting for Kogami to find the damn inspector toggle in his pocket or something. I kept waiting for it and it didn't end up happening. I was like, is nobody going to find this damn toggle switch? Nobody. So then Shindo meets back up with Azusawa, whose crime coefficient is steadily rising. So I guess it was po possible with Akane. The thing that's so funny is when the Sybil system logo finally connects with Bifrost and makes the logo at the end, I was like, oh my God, of course. It all makes sense now. Interesting. I will say this for Azusawa. He is a great slimy villain. I really appreciate him. The one thing is he manages to be a sinister villain, but he's so respectful of Abada. Like I genuinely felt sorry when she was waiting there with the umbrella for him. Like, I kind of felt sorry for her. I want them to end up in the same cell. I want them to end up in cells next to one another where they can be together. I I feel like that should happen. I want them kind of to be together, but they're probably separated, which is sad because she actually waited on him and he was nice to her. I was like, man, how about that? So Hinakawa is basically taking over Shion's role. It's nice to see it. But I just, the lighting... Of, I like that they drive past Ganoza and the two Division Three guys, and they're like, son of a bitch. <laughs> Ganoza's like, I was left out of everything. So then Mika's just, Mika's anger at finding out Frederica was acting outside of her purview. I just, I live. I live. I thought Mika was, like, going to come at Frederica for a hot second and, like, smack her or something like that. But that's not what ends up happening. I was waiting for it, though. So then we see that Karina Komiya was not killed and Shirogane is like, well, what are we doing now? And he's like, your calculations were almost inhuman. They were too perfect. Almost inhumanly so. He says, you're obsessed with AI and it's simple. You're using AI yourself. So he uses 
Macarena's, like, what does it say there on the little, on the wire pad that he activates? It says mass control of the Karina program. So Shiragane, who in the past helped to create the Macarena AI, but it got away from him. So he wanted it back from Karina. And then Kay got Homura, the copy of the files, so he could manipulate the AI. So he points out the AI that Shirogane is using to try to manipulate others. And I'm like, oh, there we go. And he brings the AI in its tidy whities or not, or just the naked version of him over to Homura. Interesting. And reveals the real Shiragane. It was a takeover. And he's like, I set up a poison pill in your acquisitions. You'll lose all your assets shortly. So he's like, I basically set up everything for you to lose. And then he gets the phone call and calls Azasawa. And Azasawa's like, how's it going? And he's like, Karina's still alive. The way that he said, yes, I know. The way that Azusawa said, yes, I know on that call. Oh my God. It was so good voice acting. I love that. And then we cut back to Arata and him in the van. The lighting on Azusawa's face, it's like a meeting of two devils. The green lighting illuminating his face made him look so sinister. Oh, oh. I, I do feel like the animation for these last three episodes wasn't as overall high quality as the other seasons, but this episode did make up for it. It was, there were several parts I really, really liked. So yeah, so Frederica gets out there with Gnose and them and Mika and they have their little tizzle. And then I like that just Kay gets the shit beat out of him and he's not letting Kokomi go. He's like grabbing up his thigh and I'm like, dude, I wish I was in your position right now and had your view. <laughs> but then Mika's like, uh, Kay, what are you doing? Get up, get back out here. <laughs> I just love that Ganoza and Kay get barked at by Mika so much. And Kokomi just looks at him like, mm, sucks to be you. <laughs> sucks to be you, my... My handler was um, a lot nicer than her. <laughs> I love, I love, okay. Also, I'm just going to say where Kay's arm is positioned in this one shot. I'm going to put it in the Discord, but it was on his thigh in one panel. And now it's like right above the crotch. I'm like, animators, you know exactly what you're doing. I wonder if there's any Kay and Kokomi fanfics. There probably are. He's like, fine. And so then Kay's like, Arata's gonna win. And Kogami's like, I don't have any objections. <laughs> Kogami's like, why do I care? Arata was picked by Akane. If he wins, I'm still satisfied because it was Akane's choice. Case in point. Also, Kogami has the biggest beefy neck in that shot. I swear. And he just passes out and Kogami sits him up. So, Yoshu Kasai is calling um what did she say she was by client side she was by connor she was by shion interesting and now she's like calling her i like that mika hadn't gone and got her body yet she was like oh it's me and she's like i need you i've located the enemy come here at once so she has her go to be frost i thought at first they were going to rendezvous and see where azusawa was but no, they left that to Shindo, and Kasai's like, Let, I found Bifrost, let's go. Okay. That shot of Azasawa in the shadows, though, it's so good. And so anyway, I what I love is they finally explain Bifrost to us. And he's like, what's your understanding of Bifrost? And Shindo's like, just tell me. <laughs> he's like, just tell me, I don't care. And so he basically explains it. It was a top secret debugging unit from the early phases of the Sybil Systems implementation. It's a debugging program. It was there around the same time that Sybil was conceived. And he's like, investors in the system's development used its position and changed it into a unit to basically do all this crime to exploit Sybil's vulnerabilities for profit. That's basically all it is. It's just, it's been, it was a debugging unit that got transferred into a way for like mafia and upper class, the 1%, to try to go around Sybil system. That's what it is. It 
which is sadly a very real world application for such a thing. He's like, that's all there is to it. And Shindo's like, but wh why, why not just stay hidden? Why commit crimes if you could act behind the scenes? And then he's like, well, that's the quirk of it starting as a debugging system. That people got greedy. It's an unnecessary procedure to keep endlessly increasing their wealth. It basically, it's like, well, people got greedy. And that's what led to crime. And it getting out of hand. And Shindo's like, well, Sybil keeps evolving. So it won't have its vulnerabilities. And he's like, right. He's like, we're just basically trading straws. And eventually all the vulnerabilities will disappear. So Azasawa, he's like, Karina was necessary to prevent that happening by getting the Macarena and all of this. So I like that Azusawa is saying my goal is to be on top. So I was going to get to the top of Bifrost and then from there jump off. He's like a flea. He's going to jump from one dog to the next until he can get to the best one possible. Yeah. He's just basically a flea and the civil system kind of recognizes him. So he says Sybil will acknowledge the rights of AI to be elected and that will create a new vulnerability. And so Macarena's development was a part of Bifrost's plan. Yep, that all makes sense now. And they wanted to get Karina, her campaign to get her elected and then kill her off and then take back control of the AI and use it for themselves. Yep, that all makes sense now. Mm-hmm. He's like, now it's my turn. He's like, I want to know the truth. And I like that Shindo's like, well, what, what do you think it is? Your true wish is to become a member of the civil system. Oh, my God. And he's like, yep, that's it. I'm like, ah! So, meanwhile, uh, Mika and them, they go basically to the bottom of Nona Tower. And they were like, how'd we get here? And that's where Bifrost was. That moment where where Azusawa tells Obade, he's like, I'll see you at the dock at the rendezvous point. At that moment, I was like, he's going to die. I thought he was going to die because it felt like one of those last moments where you know that it's the last time those characters are going to see one another. And I was like, that's it. That's the last time they're going to see one another. It's over. That's it. Ugh. I thought that was the end. And nope. Sure wasn't. <laughs> it sure wasn't. I was like, oh my God. So... I can't believe that, I guess I shouldn't be surprised after three, after three seasons that we finally have more than just Mika and Akane making it to the civil system. I shouldn't be surprised, right? And the civil system wanted him to come because it was like, I feel like Shindo might have realized it as they were going, but the civil system wanted Azusawa dead. They're like, no, he's the element we need to take out. He knows too much. He needs to go. Akari... Not Akari. Kagari. Kagari's over here like, well, F my drag, right? <laughs> Ak Kagari's like, I didn't do nearly what these other people have done. And they get to know about the civil system? It was a different time, Kagari. It was a different time. <laughs> R.I.P. Kagari. Rest in peace. And so, Azusawa's saying Sybil always makes the right choice. He's like, I'm going to make mine now. And Shindo's like, mm, I don't know if I would want to do this. So then he's like, we're in, were you sure that you could beat me? And Homura's like the moment we started. He's like, I knew I was going to invest in Shindo and it was going to work. So Homura seems to have some connection back to at sushi, right? So I'm wondering if Homura is involved in all of this. I could have swore he was in sinners in the system. I could have swore that he was. Maybe, maybe Providence will show a flashback and whether he was or not, but I could have swore that he met with the Sybil system before. I might have to go back and rewatch that first sinners in the system before Providence. I might have to. So then uh, Shirogane says, Sayonji and I purged your adoptive father, Kyo Kyoichiro. Who I'm like, was Kyoichiro the one? Well, no, he's in the deathbed, so he's not the one that took um, at sushi to his fate. But I'm like, he said adoptive father, so I'm like, where's Homura from? What's his secret? What's his past? The word adoptive is pretty important, right? 
He's like, your existence has no bearing on my motive or my father's wish. He's like, then what's your goal? He's like, I want to destroy Bifrost. And he's like, that's what I'm going to do. He's like, I would give my life to achieve it. I, my thing is, if he would give his life to destroy Bifrost, I'm like, has he already given his life? Is he part of the civil system? He's like, it's a shame I won't live to see the society you create. And he tells him it was an honor to meet him, and he basically disappears, and then it's just Homura. And then we see, like, the, the base of Bifrost at the bottom of this tower. I... And then, lo and behold, meanwhile, Shindo and Azusawa make it to the Sybil system. So, under Nona Tower was where Bifrost was. And so the B Frost says, Will you appoint a new member? And they're like, I'm going to appoint Sybil System. And B Frost is like, That would be a very bad idea. <laughs> kind of goes against our entire system. Are you sure? And he's like, Yep, I am definitely sure. So then I want to get this conversation. Mika and Kasai show up. And I like that Mika tells Kasai to be careful. Girl, Kasai has like five spares. She's fine. She's fine. You know she's a robot. Right? So then they see Homura. And they see Bifrost. And she goes over and sees him. And she's like, are you a congressman? And he says, yes, I am. And then Bifrost, meanwhile, is like the transfer procedure is complete. And so Civil System is acknowledged as the new congressman. So Civil System gets to interact with Bifrost. But I'm like, did she put, did she put Homura up to this? She says, so we meet at last. Joint automatic debugging diagnosis and repair subsystem. Also known as round robin. Yep. And we see the little, the part of the tower in between the civil system. We've grown to the point we no longer require you. And we're grateful for your good work. You're dismissed. And that's it. It's been there all along. And so then the round robin Bifrost system is completely taken, is just, it's just taken out. It kind of makes sense now that the chairs and everything would destroy the congressman using the power of the dominators, like the Sybil system, and it's a debugging. That all makes sense now. It's, it was so simple. So then the lights come on, party's over. Mika's like, what the hell's going on? And Homura looks over to them and he says, your subordinate is there. And shows Shindo and them where the Sybil system is. I just, I, Azasawa, that whole arc of him, he just wanted to be part of the Sybil system. He wanted to be in the room where it happens. And the Sybil system said no. And they shaded him. They, the shade, the tea, they just poured it over him being like, you're not worthy. Why did you think you were worthy from the start? And I'm like, oh. just telling him how he was just a, 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 a self-righteous game enthusiast. I was like, oh, yep. And so the B Frost has been dissolved. And he's like, of course. He says, I'm just an ordinary person with nothing but his talent. But that's not what the civil system's interested in. They don't care about your talent. They care about your innate traits. He broke through the walnut shell. But in the end, the nutcracker was just a puppet. At the very end, right? He was just a puppet amongst the rats. He couldn't become a king. Yep. And he's like, yeah, sorry, we're not interested. And they're like, oh, Shindo, you're here. We'll take you anytime if you want to join us. And Shindo's like, nah, I'm good. I'm, I'm enjoying my, I enjoy my mortal body and not just being a floating brain in a box. It's great. And they're like, we'd welcome you. And I like that he's like, are you saying he's better than me? And Shindo's like, no, I'm not better than you. I just have a different chemical makeup. And when he's like, how can I become one? It's like, you can't. You had to be born that way. And when the system says, no, it's an inboard trait. And they're like, there are no cases of it manifesting at your age. The look on his face. He's just like, what? Like everything he's done up to this point has been for nothing. And they're like, Koichi Azasawa, the civil system must consider all possibilities. And they say, you lack that capability. 
And he's like, but what about my system? Like, I guess the one that he made, like the Bifrost and everything. And they're like, your system consists of convenient binary choices. Yeah, so he was basically weighing the system that he made about the choices with the Sybil system. But they're like, that's not, it's convenient binary choices. They're like, that's not what we're interested in. No, we don't force others to choose between their hues and their lives. Oof. And then they all pop up and they say the criminally asymptomatic are both criminals and saints by birth. They're, they are the true zero, right? They're just plus and minus. You are neither. You are merely a self-righteous game enthusiast. <laughs> it's like, that is such a burn. Such a deep burn. I was like, oh my God. And then he just like breaks down and goes like out into the brain juice. And then the thing that gets me is that Shindo, like Akane would be so proud of Shindo because even though Azusawa has done all of these horrible things, he still doesn't want to kill him. He's like, no, he's like, I just want to arrest you. My job is to arrest you, not kill you. I really thought that Sybil system was going to take control of the gun and was going to make him shoot him and kill him. I thought that was going to be the case. I kept thinking the civil system was going to take over like Kasai with the gun and just make him use it. But he's like, no, I've empathized with a lot of people. There are criminals in the civil system. There's no reason to take away the right to atone. And he's like, I hate dominators. And then he's like, isn't that right, civil system? And the civil system, like, they, they all just go back down into the into the ground to debate, to deliberate. And they're like, fine, we won't make you kill him. You bring up a good point. We'll accept your proposal. The question is whether or not Arata is going to end up in the same boat as Akane. That is the question. The funny thing is, is that Arata and Akane, by the end of this season are going to be working together and she's an enforcer and he's an inspector, but they're so similar. Mika's done. Mika's, she's over at this point. Not only does she have a man overseeing her, which is her worst nightmare, she has to deal with Arata and Kay and Akane. Like girl, it's done. Mika is gonna be, Mika's not only gonna be popping Pez, she's gonna be crushing them up and snorting them off of her desk <laughs> every morning to deal. To deal, how is her hue not risen? How is she not criminally asymptomatic? I just, I love the final showdown between Azusawa and, Sh and Shindo. It's so good. It's my favorite. I It's probably one of my favorite confrontations in this whole series, honestly. I mean, Makishima and Kogami kind of take the cake, right? But they kind of have to, right? Any, having seen all three seasons now, any confrontation involving Makishima is superior in a lot of ways but this one is definitely other than the makishima confrontations from season one this is my favorite confrontation i love the azusawa and atsu and arata i was on the edge of my seat the whole time wondering if he was going to kill him or not and what was going to happen i was i was very riveted so we go back to bifrost and they're watching everything go down and they're like you're fascinating so are you. Mm. So Homer is saying you're fascinating is discussing that he's saying the civil system's fascinating. And Kasai's like, you're fascinating too. What do you want to do? And he says, well, I'm a fundamentally average person. A normal life is enough for me. So he's not part of the civil system. Interesting. She's like, well, I have a job for you. And he's like, I'll take it. And she says, oh, no second thoughts. And he says, I have one condition. And then that's when she, that's when she sends Mika to go pick up Shindo. When he says he has a condition, she's like, get out of here so the adults can talk. So he is not with Sybil's system then. Interesting. I'm so curious about Homura's character. I want to know more. Why is he, what is his deal? What is he after? He may remain an inspector. I like that Mika's like, yay! She's like, yay, his brain won't be taken out and he won't be subjected into the system for assimilation. Yay! Oh, the civil system. So yeah, so she goes to take care of it and leaves the two of them 
And then he says, I have one more condition. He's like, I want you to release Akane Sunomori. And Kasai says, are you saying you'll resolve the matters we def we've deferred? So she's leaving. So Kasai is leaving something for the task for Homura to do. And Homura says he'll do it if they'll release Akane. I want to know why he cares about Akane getting released. Why does that matter to him? And he says, effectively. And then she says, this society is quite constrained compared to your life so far. Hmm. And he's like, well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm so fascinated by Homura. I want to know now, now that we're getting more of him and he has this plan and he wants Akane freed. I'm like, what is he doing? And him and civil system are working together. What? He says, freedom in chains. That's what a real life is all about. And the whole freedom in chains concept, I mean, I guess be, if he's bound to a duty, he can do whatever he wants within it. It's kind of like Ganoza and Kogami and Akane as enforcers. They're bound to this life of servitude, but there is some freedom and some transparency they have through society that normal people don't have. And they get to see the truth of the matter and... I, I, th I feel like with Homer and Akane, they're kind of like freedom in chains. They know the truth, but they're bound by the justice that they work within, within that, like they have freedom, but it's in a line of servitude towards the system. So I, I'm so fascinated by Homer. I want to know more about him, but I'm curious. And that smile, I don't trust that smile. I've seen... Miyana Mamoru smiling as him. Like, he... Homer ain't done two things this entire season except walk that dog and then everything that happens in this episode. And I'm like, why suddenly? I guess with Kay. He had that stuff with Kay. But him being suddenly congenial, it feels very Lucifer, and I don't know how to feel about it. And she's like, well, yeah, you're an odd one. I'm like, are you two gonna make out? <laughs> Is Kasai and Homer just gonna make out there? If he's weird, I could see him being into it. I could see him being into it. What the fudge? So they arrest Azusawa. Uh, Shindo looks like he has been through hell and back. Him and Kay are so beat up. And then, yeah, it took me a second to realize that Mika down there at Civil System, he's like, wait, you know about the Civil System? And she's like, it's a long story. So yeah, so now Shindo, Akane, and Mika, they all know the truth. How long is it going to take for everybody else to find out? But Civil Systems planning on doing a public awareness soon, it seems. So it may not be long before everybody knows about it. Right? And so then, like, Homura shows up to help get Shindo and them. And he's like, who are you? And he's like, someone who invested in you. And I'm like, what? Now I want to know how Homer is tied to all of this because he was playing it super close to the vest up until this episode. What? That is the saddest thing. Obata just sitting there waiting, waiting for him to come. And then she's like, scumbag. Meanwhile, Kogami and Ganoza show up and they take her in. Poor... Poor Shindo, he just looks so worse for wear. I like the ambulance drones have, like, they've upgraded since season one, which is cute. But the two of them together, oh. And then, I love Karina shows up. Shindo, his whole face is bruised. His whole face looks like a beat-up potato. And she's like, you're the worst bodyguard ever. And I'm like, bitch, he went to he, he, he threw down for you, girl. And then I feel like there's still room for Shindo and Karina to have, like, a relationship together. Who knows? I'm glad that they kind of backtracked and didn't do anything with the immigrants anymore. And instead they're like, it was actually all of this stuff happening. So, no worries. Meanwhile, they ask Akane if she predicted that Shindo would go on living outside of us. And Akane is like, that was his choice. I love the idea that this season has been about choices. In the words of Tatiana, choices that people make. And it was Arata's decision to not, to not become like his father and possibly not choose the civil system. Hmm. In any case, did you consider his options? I like she has all these little like makeup cases. 
She's like, we considered making him an intermediary when the system is made public. Uh-huh. She's like, I'm talking about a law guaranteeing his life. When the system is made public, the law should protect you in the same way. So basically, Akane is saying, now, now, you're going to make a law when you go public saying the civil system is without being able to be harmed that should protect the criminally asymptomatic, which should protect uh, Arata, right? I love that Akane, she just, there's a little part of her that always feels like she has the upper hand, right? She's like, it will also limit you. And they're like, Akane Sunamori, we decided to grant you a degree of freedom independent of your wishes. Whatever happened in the past, it feels like Akane was ready to stay there forever behind bars. So maybe she did kill somebody. Maybe. I, possibly. She could have killed somebody. Meanwhile, I was waiting for Atsushi and for, not Atsushi, I keep on seeing his dad's name on here, so it's making me think of that, for Arata and Ganoza to have a conversation. I was like, that's all I need. It wasn't the way I thought it was going to go down, but I'm like, yes. I just, I love that their, their family's graves are in the same vicinity. I'm like, could it not be fate? And he's like, my father died seven years ago. Seven years. Can you believe it's been that long since season one? And he's like, yep. I love these, like, you're the son of a detective working for foreign affairs. It's like, how does that feel? And he's like, I realized how my father felt. He became an enforcer so he could stay a detective. And that's kind of the thing. Ginoza telling Shindo, he's like, well, my dad wanted to stay a detective. So the only way for him to do that and stay alive was to become an enforcer. I want to stay a detective. And the only way I could do that was to move to foreign affairs. So something happened in the past and Ganoza was like, bye, and jumped ship to go hang out with Kogami and Frederica. And Sugo went too. Which Sugo was recruited by Frederica, so I'm not surprised about that at all. But Ganoza, I feel like whatever happened to Akane back then, he was like, nah, I gotta go. I gotta be able to help Akane and I can't do that here. Ah. Uh, I also love the animation of the two of them walking. What's really cool is you see Ganoza's walk, and, like, Arata has this very distinct kind of, like, gait where his whole body moves. They're very distinctive walking styles. The animation team didn't have to do that, but they did. Was it for a purpose or a position? And Ganoza's like, it was for a purpose. He's like, if people are keeping a job for a position, it's not worth it. I love the cherry blossoms. He's like, I used to be that way. And just the callback that Gnose is like, I used to be doing my job for the position, and that was wrong, and now I'm doing it for the purpose. And I'm like, oh my god! I just, oh god, freaking, freaking love Gnose. I love Gnose so much. He's so freaking good. Like, his character development. Can we talk about it? Can we talk about it? And he's like, don't lose sight of your purpose either, and why you do this. And Shindo's like, oh, don't worry. He's like, I, I chose I chose not to become part of a hive mind collective. I'm fine. <laughs> and Gnoza's like, yeah. And whenever Gnoza, like, he says, you look better, better than when we first met. And when he, like, when he, like, does the shoulder tap and he does the, that's Masayoka. That's Masayoka. The, the throwing the hand back. Being like his dad, ah! Uh, I I feel like it's so cool that you have that you have Arata, who was told not to become like his father, or that he was gonna become like his father, and then he chooses not to. But then you have Ganoza, who was told he was gonna become like his father, but not to become like his father, and then he kind of does. But they're both good, and it's like oh, that's one of my favorite scenes in this whole episode. I freaking love it. So then we have, like, Kunizuka recovering with Shion. They talk about getting a place together, looking for a house. And she's like, well, you could stay with me. Like, wouldn't that be convenient? And so then, then we come back to the office and Timma makes fun of the music box that Eerie got her. And Eerie's like, I'll kill you. And then there's a reorganization that Hinakawa announces today. And Mika... They're like, oh, Mika, by the way, here is your brand new chief. 
Shizuka Homura. Oh, I with the red tie. Uh-uh. I don't know how to take it. And Mika being like, w what? <laughs> She's like, excuse me? They're like, yeah, his compatibility is perfect. They're highly capable. He looks too handsome. He's too handsome. And she's like, no, I don't want any of this. She's like, absolutely not. And they're like, to replenish your personnel, I'm going to sign you an aide. And they're like, Akane Sunamori, she'll be your new statutory enforcer. And Mika, her face, she's like, no, this is the worst decision. She's like, Kasai, you've betrayed me. I thought we had something. You could have ended it here. They didn't have to do Providence. You could have just ended it here, and that was it. Then we cut to Azusawa, who's in his tank, in his holding cell. He has the Nutcracker book with him. His crime coefficient is still 288. And his, like, facial hair is starting to grow back out, and he's like, the truth about Sybil. That's why his crime coefficient isn't going down, because he knows the truth, and nobody's going to believe him. Oh, is that why you left me? At sushi. Yep. I think it was. I think it was. Meanwhile, we have Akane getting out, and there's freaking Kogami waiting on her. And I'm like, cheers. Cheers, mother truckers. Look at this shit. And when she gets out and she looks at her and he looks at she looks at him and he looks at her and she's just like, oh, hey, you. And he's just waiting on her. Oh, oh the cherry blossoms. Are you joking? And then he says he's sorry. And she's like, why? <laughs> she's like, make up for it. <laughs> and then she's like, I'm hungry. Watch, take me get some food. Watch, make it a date. And he's like, is food all on your mind? I'm like, you show how dare you how dare you and he's like is food all on your mind is food the only thing on your mind and she replies with treat me to something you, you can't say those things that is set up for a fan fiction if i've ever seen one where is it <laughs> i feel like i feel like i'm in pokemon blue and i'm trying to like push the truck to find the mew i'm like where is it show it's there, damn it. He just smiles down her. Kogami beat the shit out of Kay. Didn't give two shits about Arata. Didn't even glance or offer a half smile at Mika. Just kind of nods and goes, yeah, to Frederica. But he gives that smile to Kane. I'm gonna snap my fingers until the fan fiction appears before me. That's it. So then they're back to their, their, um dinner together i also love the tower with three spears and the moon painting that's there and they're like we finally learned what happened to our family no matter what the truth lies in wait the three of us can overcome it together so yeah they're basically like well we found some truth out but there's still some other information we have yet to find the answers to and then yeah they all stick together and then we have them working out at the end and he's like, did you ever do mental manipulation? He's like, yeah, to get you to propose to Maiko. <laughs> and he's like, ah. And he's like, I have other secrets in this case. And Kay is like, so do I. And they're like, I'll tell you one day, I promise. And the thing about it is, it may not even, they may not even have to tell one another. It may just come out in the wash if civil system goes public or... If the stuff, if Pomer reveals the stuff about the inspector, they may not even have to tell each other. But, oh, that was so good. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in stark denial that next week is the last of Psychopaths for now. Maybe ever. I don't know. The movie just came out now. So, I will watch and see where it goes. But maybe there'll be more Psychopaths in the future. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> If not, I don't know, but this was a really good conclusion. I was very happy with it. Um, I'm excited to see next week. I hope you all are too, but I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, I'll be back next week with the final installment for now of Psychopaths. Bye.